Hi everyone, welcome to another podcast for the Gigi Gent. Today I'm interviewing or er, podcasting with Steve Way. Hi Steve, can you say hello? Hello. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm pretty good. Um, can you uh so you I'm gonna talk about your uh you have a video series, a web series. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us about that? Sure. Um, so I have a web series called Uplifting Dystrophy. And it was created by myself and a good friend of mine, John Braylock. And we had the idea that we wanted to do something together for like four years. Right. And we had the idea of writing a pilot, which we did, and right before we got ready to really uh, film it, just to say well, look, our friend Ron Issa, who helped us out with it, got a job on Nickelodeon. So he had to move to LA, and mm-hmm. because of his contract, he couldn't do anything else. So instead of scrapping the idea all together, John and I said, why don't we just do something together? Right. So out of the pilot came the web series. Nice. So what kind of what what are your what is your topic on your web series? What are the, you... whole, the point of the web series, or I should say the plot of what the web series is right. that John tries to take me to my first party in New York City. Yeah. And obviously New York City isn't really the most wheelchair friendly. No, it area. isn't. So no. y- you can imagine how each episode ends. Right. But really, it's it really focuses on our friendship and how my disability gets in the way of it, and right. how it kind of tests our relationship. Right. So I watched um. I watched the first two episodes, and I liked the um, the episode in the church. Yeah, that's my favorite one. Yeah, that I've actually been in the same position. Uh huh. It's very awkward. Yeah. It's yeah. like okay, I want to get out of here now. Yeah, it's a lot of pretty much. I think every episode is taken from real life experience. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. I totally, I totally get it. Cause, like, everything that happened to you has happened to me. Mm-hmm. So it's just, I liked it a lot. Thank you, thank you. Um, so what was like, you said your favorite episode is the church one. Mm-hmm. Why, why is that? Just because. Well, it's funny because John and our director, Kyle College, mm-hmm. they went scouting for churches, and right. they picked that one. Uh huh. And when I got there, um, I wasn't really sure how to get in. Right. There were, there were steps in front. Yeah. And there were steps on the side. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the whole cast of the crew were there. It's crazy. Everyone's getting everything set up. Mm-hmm. And I, I finally get John. And Kyle together, and I said, Hey, where do I go in? And they just looked at each other, and they're basically like, Oh. Oh my god. Right? And I'm like, You, you gotta be kidding me. Like, oh. you picked the only church that I can't get in. Right. So, in the episode, you see that my character is very visibly upset with John, mm-hmm. you know, for bringing me to the <laughs> church party. Yeah. When in reality, I was pretty pissed at him in real life, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I just love that episode because it, it really, it shows in our friendship and mm-hmm. what we're willing to do for each other. Yeah. No matter how much we don't want to. Mm-hmm. And that, in the end, I always have the upper hand. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh-huh. yeah, I mean, we... We spent a lot of time editing that episode. Right. Um, 
And this is the only episode that has a scene after the credits. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so... Huh. Um... It just, I think that is probably my best episode in terms of acting. Yeah. Um, especially The Preacher. Oh, I yeah. I mean, that, Ben Coleman. Mm-hmm. Um, just outstanding in that role. Yeah, it was... It was it is hard for me to tell that he was acting. Cause yeah, he was, yeah. He was just so spot on. Yeah, he was very good. Yeah. So you also do, um, I first heard about you through the Vine, your Vine videos. Mm-hmm. So how did you, um, how did you start doing that? Yeah, my friend Romney, you know who I mentioned before, mm-hmm. um, is pretty big on Vine. Yeah. He has a pretty big following. Mm-hmm. And Basically, one day, last December, he was like, Steve, you gotta get on Vine and do something. Yeah. So I just put one up, and then I did, you know, a bunch after that. And then this past April, I flew out to L.A. Uh-huh. to visit Ronnie mm-hmm. and to see a taping of his Nickelodeon show. And while I was out there, I met up with um, Rudy Mancuso, mm-hmm. who has one of the biggest followings on Vine. Uh-huh. And me and him did one together. Oh, and, awesome. Yeah, and I uploaded it, and he, re, uh, and he revined it. And nice. it went, it went viral. Really? Like three, yeah, it went for like three days. Um, in a week, I got uh, like 60,000 followers. That's, um, that's really... It was insane. Yeah. And the, the Vine was everywhere. Yeah. Like Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr. Like, people who I haven't seen in, like, years were coming up to me yeah. saying that they, that they saw it. Awesome. Yeah, and um, I just, I, I, I've been getting a lot more recognized. Yeah. Since then, like, I did a video with a friend in the summer, and when he put it up, one of the YouTube comments was, oh, that's the guy from the vine. Mm-hmm. And that's never happened before. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, it's, it's starting. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Um, so, so, all right, so, you, you do, uh, you do stand-up comedy, mm-hmm. or sit-down yeah. com- comedy. A lot of people don't get that joke. Yeah, well, you know. Which is unfortunate. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, what's that like? Where do you usually perform? Yeah, stand up comedy is awesome. Um, I usually perform at the People's Improv Theater mm-hmm. or the Pit over in New York City. Yeah. Um, me and John co host a show every month called The Lockdown. Uh huh. Um, John's been doing the show for like two years now. Right. And, you know, I did it like off and on, but like officially, I've been co host for six months now. Nice. And, and I've been doing stand up for four years. Yeah. What's, what are the reactions that you get? Um, it's weird. You know, if I do it in front of an audience who has no idea who I am, mm-hmm. they, I definitely sense the hesitation Yeah. from them in regards to, like, laughing. Right. I like them because they don't really, I guess they're not really sure. Right, yeah. You know, like, a lot of my jokes are, like, me making fun of myself and my disability. Yeah. So, I can definitely feel like they're uncomfortable and they're unsure. Right, they, don't, they don't know if they should yeah, laugh yeah. or not, and yeah. I don't blame them for that. Um, but by the end of it, they definitely get a yeah. feel for my sense of humor. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Cool. Yeah. So, you know, it all works out again. Yeah. So, um... I wanted to talk about, like, more, a broader topic of disability. And, um, you have muscular dystrophy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. And, um, so, how, how is it, what was it like growing up and now that you're an adult, you know, you're older now, well, how has it changed? Um, I, I always consider myself lucky. Um, because my condition progressed 
pretty slowly. Mm-hmm. Um, so when something happened, like when I had a setback, mm-hmm. um, I was given plenty of time to adapt yeah. until the next one happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and that definitely helped with like my friends too. Where mm-hmm. it wasn't like so much was thrown at them all at once. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I just, everything that I've been through, you know, all the illnesses, the surgeries, the hospital stays, I feel like I'm well equipped to really overcome any setback. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like I know enough now to play it smart and to, what, to, know, what to know what to do should something happen. Right, okay, so um, on my blog and on my podcast, I review um, video games, computer games, board games, and TV shows and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, are you into any of that stuff? Oh. I used to be uh, into video games. Mm-hmm. I guess I school kind of got in the way. Yeah. Um, I'm really... Uh, I'm not, I'm not in front of my computer mm-hmm. pretty much all the time. Yeah. So I'm always like reading an internet article mm-hmm. or on some kind of like tech blog or right. like TV review site. Right. Um, yeah, right now I'm binge watching 24. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And I'm almost done. Mm-hmm. I started in so like April. Right. And I'm on, I'm like halfway through the latest season. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, um, I was watching, uh, my friend wanted me to watch The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. So I, I binge watched all four seasons in like two weeks. Nice. Just so I can watch the season five premiere. Right, right. And he was like, I can't believe you did that. And I was like, I had nothing else to do. I also did that with um, Breaking Bad. Yeah. Last year. It was my last semester of college. Mm -hmm. And I had only one class. Oh, yeah. It was like Mondays Mondays and Thursdays from 10 to 11.15. Mm -hmm. And just every day I just sat in front of my TV and watched Breaking Bad. And it really helped me prepare for shooting my web series. Yeah, I've had I've had no formal acting training. Right. And that show really helped me show um like character development mm-hmm. and to show how um you know how important emotion is. Right. And how much a character can change over time. Mm-hmm. And I think that show is really the perfect example for that. Isn't there a disabled character on that show? Yeah, yeah, um, the character who plays, uh, Walter's son, mm-hmm. um, his name is RJ Mini. Mm-hmm. Um, I know he's not, like, in real life, he's not as disabled as it is in the show. Right. But, you know, still to have an actual disabled character mm-hmm. on a major TV show yes. is something that you really don't see too often. I never actually, um, I never watched that show. No, you shouldn't. So, is there, is it, is it a good portrayal? Like, I've never, I don't know. I just don't, they don't really address it. No, it's just like a non-issue. Yeah, it's just, it's there. Yeah, it's just there. And I think that's great because you don't have to question it. Right. Yeah, I like when shows do that, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, they have a disabled character and it's not really, like, brought up. Right, it's not like the point of the show. Right, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of another show. Did you ever watch ER? No, no, never got into that. I remember Grey's Anatomy Die, actually. Oh, okay. Because on ER, one of the doctors had, I think, CP, Mm -hmm. I think, maybe. And, um, they didn't really address it, as far as I remember. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah. What's now? What are you going to do now? After your show and... Yeah, I'm hoping me and John are, you know, we're looking to take our stand-up show to the next level. Mm-hmm. 
Um, just try to really promote it, really get it out there. Right. Um, just to really boost our presence, too, in, like, the New York comedy scene. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm hoping to get it to TV now. Yeah. Yeah, so like there's some kind of, um, acting or, you know, like, reality stuff like that. That'd be awesome, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, in the meantime, I'm still gonna, uh, keep going vines. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping to get my website up and running by the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, hoping to do some kind of, like, internet web show. Right. So. Cool. Yeah. Are you ever into, like, Star Trek? Star Wars? Oh, yeah, I'm big into both of them, actually. You like Star Trek? Which do you like better? I know that's the usual I, I, you know, question. I, yeah. Honestly, I like Star Trek better. Yeah, me because too. I'm a big fan of the original series. Mm-hmm. And oh, that yeah. show, it was just, it was so sort of groundbreaking when it came out. Yeah. You know, there's so, so many, uh, like, historical elements and so many themes from society at the time, mm-hmm. you know, that were just thrown into the future. Yeah. I mean, to have, like, the first, you know, interracial kiss. Yes. On cable TV, that's huge. Yeah, it's huge. And, you know, to have, um, just topics about race mm-hmm. and sexuality and gender that mm-hmm. no other show was doing at the time. And even they had a, um, a black woman yeah. Uh, on the bridge, and a Japanese man during like that heated right. time, and, and it was Russian just like, during the Cold War. Right. Yeah. So it was just, it was really amazing, and yeah. I think for me that's one reason why I just really connected to that show. Just absolutely, absolutely. Because of the diversity, mm-hmm. and even on uh, the Next Generation. They right. have a uh, Jordy who's mm-hmm. blind, who is blind, and he's on the bridge, and it's not. They don't really bring it up on the show, right, you know. Don't have to. Right. So I just I really love it. That's why I just watch it. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm like obsessed. With yeah, you're a hardcore trucker. I'm a hardcore trucker. I love it. Yeah. Um. What are some accessibility things or uh, changes that can be made to make your travels or your stand-up easier for you? Well, a big thing with New York is that most comedy clubs are in, like, basements. Right. So there are very few places in which I can do stand-up. Mm-hmm. And it, it's really hard because obviously there's a lot of room for improvement. Yeah, so And the only way to do that is by practicing. Mm-hmm. But I can't practice if I can't get into any places. Mm-hmm. You know, like when, when I was in LA visiting around me, I got to talk to the showrunner of the show that he was on. Right. And, you know, he asked, like, how often do you do open mics? Mm-hmm. I said, well, I really don't, because I can't get into a lot of the places. Right. And he said, and he said why not? And I said, stairs. Yes. And he was like, oh, so you literally cannot get into the place. And it, you know, it's true. There are so many mm-hmm. places where, I, you know, I just can't get in, and especially in, like, the outer boroughs. Yeah. Um, you know, like, going to Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. There are so very few subway stops that are wheelchair accessible. Oh yeah, I found out the hard way. Yeah, me too. I, I was um I was in the city with my then boyfriend and we tried to get on the subway at Penn Station. Yeah. And there's like a huge gap in between the the train and the platform. Yeah. And people it, it, the the station is listed as accessible. But so it's the really, only reason why it wasn't as accessible is because it has an elevator. Yeah, but they don't realize that that isn't the only thing that right. needs to make it accessible. And half the elevators don't even work. I know. I just, I dread 
getting on those elevators. Because I'm afraid to get stuck. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty bad. I mean, luckily for me, my, my uncle is an elevator maintenance worker mm-hmm. in New York City. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I'm having problems with like, holding up. Yeah. Um, luckily, I have yet to get stuck mm-hmm. on an elevator. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to find out, so. Yeah. Let's now you're, that way. Now you're going to get stuck. Probably. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, um, that's my life. I also found that find the streets in New York are just atrocious. Like, the sidewalks are all cracked and the street themselves have big holes in them. Yeah, yeah, the streets are bad. Um, I almost broke my neck one time, like driving yeah. down the curb. Um, like, oh my god. Yeah, it, it all depends on where you go. Yeah. So if you're in the more highly populated areas, honestly, mm-hmm. the sidewalk accessibility is better than in my town. Yeah. Um, honestly, I just ride a bike plane the whole time. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But it's here way faster. Yeah, I'm, like, terrified to do that. Nah, it's <laughs> fun. Try it. Okay. I'll try it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We know how it goes. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, is there, how can we reach you on Twitter? Yeah, um, you can find me on Facebook, Steve Way. Okay. Um, Twitter, and Vine, at the Steve Way. At the Steve Way, okay. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I hope I have uh, my website up soon, which is the Steve Way dot com. Mm-hmm. Cool. And, uh, you know, once I get that up and running, you'll pretty much be able to find everything from there. All right. Well, thank you for being on the podcast. Ah, thank you for the opportunity. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, I did too. I, uh, hope you've already done some time. Alright, cool. See ya. Alright, thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to another podcast by the Gigi Gimp. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, reach me on Twitter at Gigi Gimp or my email Erin at ggdimp.com. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Bye-bye.